I've looked at these whole house energy savers before. The ones that are supposed to reduce your electricity bill, but are a bit dubious. And uh, this one uh, is slightly different, so I thought, let's see if they've changed much. So this one, the main thing is it's got a digital readout on it, and it's described as an 80 kilowatt digital energy electricity saver LED power saving box uh, bill killer. So um, if your name's Bill, you're screwed. Uh, and the idea is that you just, you know, the way they're presented, you just plug them in at a socket and they save you a fortune. Your meter runs slower. But in the back of the box, it shows a distorted sine wave with glitches and spikes, and then it shows the lovely clean sine wave, and I'm guessing, I haven't translated this, but I'm guessing it's actually just showing its use as an interference suppressor, or it might be doing that thing where they say, by removing all the glitches, it ends up using less electricity. Now, in the past, I opened one of these up and it had a big capacitor inside it. So let's, uh, well, let's get this out for a start and try it out. So here's the unit. It's another one of these metal case units with just the two pole uh, connector, which is a bit dubious. It's got, it's got four spare fuses. That doesn't bode well, does it? Um, so what type of fuses? If it's a big capacitor, I'd expect anti-surge ones because they can take quite a pop when you turn the power on or when they're doing their business of uh, suppressing glitches. 250 volt rating. F 5 amp, so it's quick blow 5 amp fuses, which I think slow blow would have been better for that, not to worry. Uh, more Chinese instructions. Um, okay. Fuses out the way. I wouldn't trust those fuses anyway. Uh, let's plug it in and see what happens. It might go bang, that'd be quite a good result in general. Now, the first one of these I tested, I'm pretty sure I tried it in the hoppy meter. In fact, let's get the hoppy meter and see what happens. And the hoppy meter just didn't register it at all. It didn't see anything because the power supply the, was so capacitive that it didn't see any sort of real power. It was only seeing apparent power. And for some reason, it didn't register that. So let's plug this in. So this is a well, the top is showing that the supply voltage is 246 volts. This says 245 volts, uh, which is fine. That's good enough. I'm not going to quibble about a volt. The current, it only shows, it's showing it as 96 milliamps. Okay, I was expecting harder than that, I was expecting, uh, the power factor is terrible, it's like 0 0.03, which is what you'd expect if it is just a capacitor inside. And the power it's consuming is, this uh, real power is about 0.7 watts, which will almost certainly just be, oh, that's quite a bright LED in the bottom there, uh, with Decent flicker according to the camera and, and the digital readout of this display here, which probably uses a capacitive dropper. Okay, so that's uh, showing about 96 milliamps. Tell you what, let's uh, plug in the other meter and we'll see what it shows and see if it reads it any differently. This meter's a bit dumber than the hoppy, so it's more likely to uh, give a more honest result. Uh, with the previous one, it showed quite a high current, uh, but low power, as you'd expect of a big capacitor. It's only showing 0.4 watts, which I'm pretty sure is similar to the other one. Uh, it's showing 95 milliamps again, so okay. That's interesting. It's kind of less current than I was expecting. Normally in these things, uh, in fact, we could test that. This is a capacitor. This is a, a 10 microfarad capacitor that designed for motors and fans and things like that. Let's strip this. Hopefully it won't go bang. Uh, and we'll stick it in the quick block and we'll stick it in that meter. And we'll stick it in the hoppy, in fact, and see what that says. I will be opening this. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't panic. I want to uh, explore this first. I've just been distracted technically. So I want to put a pure capacitive load across this first and see what it registers and then we'll try it in the hobby. So let's bring the quick test up. Cliff quick test. And we'll stick capacitor into it. Uh, I'll have to remember this might not have a discharge resistor, this capacitor built in. Um, so let's plug that in there, set it to current. I heard it pop, it says Starts off 1.3, it goes down to zero, I'd expect that. Uh, it's showing 600 milliamps is flowing through this capacitor. That's quite a lot of current, isn't it? That's over half an amp. Uh, let's see what the hoppy says. Am I going to regret this? Am I going to get a zap off this? Does it have discharge? 
Uh, right, okay, that's fine. Uh, the neon would take it down to a large degree anyway. So let's try the hoppy. And we'll see what the hoppy makes of the uh, of the capacitor. So this is where we'll have to use this to sit up above those terminals. The hoppy says zero power, zero current. It's zero power fact. It's just ignoring it completely. It does not like the capacitor. It just it's so capacitive. Nothing else in the load that it just decides that it's not going to treat it as a real load. Let's see if this does hold a charge by disconnecting it live. Oh, we pop. Nothing really major though, it might have a discharge resistor inside. Okay, that's interesting. That does make me think that I was hoping this one, the unit here was going to have a fairly chunky capacitor in it, like most of them do. But I'm getting the feeling now it's not. Uh, let's, uh, just out of interest, measure across that with a capacitive range and see what it actually comes up with. So let's be optimistic and say 200 microfarad, which I'm not really thinking it's going to be anywhere near that. Oh, it's not anywhere near that. Oh dear, let's, uh, let's be somewhat less optimistic. One microfarad. Okay, I think it's time to open this. As Quack products go, I think it might be quite non-generous. I think the main feature of this one might be the power-on indicator and the LED digital readout. So what screws is this? Ah, oh, tamper-proof screws. That's annoying. Perhaps they don't really want you going into it and discovering that it doesn't really contain an awful lot. So I'll whiz these out. I'll use the cordless drill to get them out. So which uh, of these bits is going to fit? Are any of these bits going to fit? That'll do. Let's get that into the cordless drill and whip this open. The reason uh, when a capacitor is connected across, uh, it doesn't draw any power. There's no heat off the capacitor, even though it seems this one was passing 600 milliamps. The reason for that is power factor. The fact that the uh, the uh, current isn't in sync with the voltage. Now you're all saying, why didn't why don't you use that every time when you're taking the screws out? You could be right. Now am I going to regret taking it out from that end? There is a capacitor at the back. I can see it. Hold on. What's the bet? The capacitor at the back is just a really small, low-value one. There is a circuit board. There is a capacitor. Oh, there's really not much in there, is there? And this, unfortunately, this digital readout is going to stop it. Oh, tell you what, there's a connector. There's a connector on it. Can we pop the digital readout out? I'm pretty sure we can. It's a tight fit. Oh, is that going to come out? It's making poppy noises. This is where I'm going to end up bursting it, but that's okay. I don't think it's doing an awful lot anywhere than being a very nice box for a digital readout. That is not coming out terribly easily. I'll tell you what, that'll do. So there's the... There's the meter module in there. Hold on, let me shine some light on that. There's the meter module in there with a capacitive dropper for its own power supply. That capacitor there will also be contributing to that capacitance reading. So what have we got on this circuit board? In a sense, I suppose they could have cheated even further, but let's not encourage them by actually using the capacitive dropper in this, theoretically put it in series with uh, the circuitry here. Uh, so what are they doing? What is this capacitor? And using it as it's the capacitor drop for the power LED. It is one microfarad. That's odd then that that one didn't, the parallel capacitor should have added up. Uh, so what we've got here, we've basically got 
The capacitive dropper, the reason that was flickering so much is because they've been really crappy about it and they've used a half-wave rectifier by the look of it. Oh, that's a bit odd, but they've done. That's a bit cheap and tacky. Uh, in its favour, the thing is going through the fuse. Uh, I'm just going to doodle this out. One moment, please. Oh dear. That's even crapper than I was expecting. I kind of thought that might have been part of the LED circuit, but this circuit board is clearly designed to take large capacitors. It's designed to take capacitors that are this size, cable tied on or strapped on in some way so that it can actually have some effect. Not, not to save power in your house, though. But what it actually is, is you get your mains come in, it goes through this fuse, and then it uh, it just goes straight to that capacitor with a discharge resistor, a 470k discharge resistor across it, so you don't get a zing off the pins. And the digital meter is just tacked physically, just soldered across those leads. It's not like this was designed to take take that in this board. It's a, it's a gimmick they've added. It's a mess. There's something under the screen in the meter. It's a bit yucky. Not to worry. Uh, the LED is just a diode, a resistor to limit the current, then the LED with the capacitor across it. It's really basic and simple. Um, so that's not impressive. Now, what I was talking about the uh, the effect, uh, they go around with these units in display cases with the sort of fake salesmen that sell these things, you know, the uh, charlatans. And they've got these sort of uh, briefcases that open and inside they've got the uh, a digital meter showing current and then they've got the socket so you can plug one of these units into it. And then they've got a really lossy electric motor that poses a huge inductive load. It's basically a induction motor but with no load in it. So you can see the motor spinning, it draws quite a high current because the whole thing about power factor is that if you get your sine wave, um, the voltage and in an ideal power factor, unity, um, you'd, the current would match the voltage so they'd be two sine waves superimposed. When you've got an inductive load, it kind of lags with the sine wave. It looks like that. And by adding a capacitor, you can bring it back in sync. And because they're out of sync, it actually seems to, it shows up as drawing a lot more current. In a way, that's how inductors work. They, they sort of, in, you know, in the same way a capacitor can be used to limit current, you can also use an inductor to limit current. That's how the ballasts and old fluorescent fittings work. So what they do in this display case, they show the terrible, like, high current reading of just the basically inductive load, and then they plug in the miracle power-saving device, which is all very obviously just going across the lines, and then suddenly it miraculously improves that the current drops, and they say, look how much money that's going to save you. In reality, most uh, digital meters, uh, most uh, electricity meters, will not measure the apparent power. They only measure the real power, so all you'd be paying for with that meter uh, should I say the motor running would be the the actual power of the losses in the motor and then the power of the motor with no load anyway so it wouldn't have been that high so it's all a bit quacky it will act as a suppression capacitor I mean it will act as a capacitor across the mains but to be honest so would an LED lamp in this case and also if you this did have a huge capacitor in it and you plugged it across supply and your house did not have an inductive load, then the power factor would be terrible anyway because that would have a big capacitor across it and it would be a leading power factor, which in the case of, uh, you know, I'm suspicious because uh, modern uh, smart meters can measure apparent power as well as real power. And all it takes at the electricity company is that little box that they put the wee check in, they just go up their mouse, click it, and they could basically set all the meters to start charging for... Um, the apparent power and suddenly everybody's bill is going to go up. They're going to try that one day. It's guaranteed. But, um, yeah, that's... I'm disappointed. I, I was kind of secretly hoping it was going to have a big fat capacitor in it. It's really just the basics. It's just, you know, trying to do the minimum possible to make it look a desirable gadget. It's not even great as an interference suppressor. That's disappointing. But having said that, it does what it kind of does. Lights up and shows the voltage. Yeah, but yeah, worth taking one apart anyway, just to see if they've changed much, uh, and they have, for the worst.